Thanks for bearing with us, guys. Big hello and a big thank you as well. Uh, really appreciate you guys taking the time. Uh, I've been in Malaysia for a while now, and I know kind of lunch hour is sacred here, so, and I know it's lunchtime, so really appreciate you guys taking the time now. Um, today, I'm here to run through creating almost Instagram-like experiences on websites. Uh, a little bit about myself, I'm a senior account manager here at uh, Insider, working in Malaysia. Um, and essentially, I'm looking after partners, managing relationships, and essentially helping them form digital strategies to boost engagement, boost revenue uh, through online channels. And we have this not working. Can you? This needs to plug in. Sorry, guys, one second. Okay, cool. So just a quick agenda. Uh, I'll delve a little bit more into myself, uh, what I do, and as well, what we do as a company. Um, but then also run through some industry trends, uh, some successes, some experiences, and overall storytelling as well. So how to tell a good story. Um, you've had a lot of sessions, and there will be a lot of sessions on how you can build stories and start from scratch. Um, very good couple of sessions earlier on today. Now I've got a few pointers, I guess, uh, in terms of how you might want to start thinking about you know, using data uh, to boost stories, boost engagement, because I think that's super important as well. Uh, and then if there's enough time, I mean, we're using Slido, so feel free to drop any questions on Slido. Uh, but we'll have a Q&A session as well, so feel free to ask whatever you want um, within reason, and I'll try and answer as best as I can. No. <laughs> okay, cool. So, essentially I run customer success here in Malaysia. Um, originally from London, uh, as you can probably tell from the accent. Uh, the other day actually someone said that I was from the States. So I got a little bit offended, but hey ho, that's that. Uh, I thought my accent was quite clear, but apparently not. Um, so just let me know if, uh, if there's any questions on that. But I've kind of lived all over the world. Uh, I've lived in London, Bangkok, Shanghai, and now residing in KL full time. Bit about my background. Uh, originally, I was part of a data analytics company back in London for a good few years. Moved over here a couple years ago now. Uh, feels like yesterday. Uh, currently working for Insider. So Insider is a growth management platform. Essentially, what we do is we help our partners grow which is a, a very big general statement. Uh, so how do we do this? Essentially, we target the key areas within a funnel. You know, you have your acquisition, your activation, your retention, and ultimately, we all want to drive revenue. So we're a company headquartered in Singapore, uh, originally founded in Europe, and then moved over here. We have 19, actually, we now have 21 offices. Uh, we're opening up in the States later on this year, which is quite exciting. Uh, we're also backed by Sequoia, which I don't know if any of you guys know these guys, um, but I'm sure you use a lot of the companies that they invest, invested in, such as WhatsApp, Google, Facebook, all early stage investors. So very proud to, to uh, get that kind of support as well. And I think one of the key things as well is just noticing the local presence. You know, we're a firm believer of being on the ground, working together, collaborating together. It's super important. But anyway... I'll start off with a few industry trends. I'm sure you're going to get a lot of trend slides, um, so we'll kind of breeze through this a little bit, but you know, hopefully it can add a little bit more value for you guys. So I want to start off about personalization. Uh, I think maybe a lot of you currently implement personalization. Uh, personalization is all about creating personalized experiences for your users. At the end of the day, I'm going to be very different to your other buyers. Uh, what I want, when I want it, is going to be very different to any of you guys. So it's all about creating that personal experience to help drive engagement, drive conversions, the key kind of metrics that we look at when we're running businesses. And just a quick stat here, I mean, you know, Netflix's recommendation system, I mean, it's been calculated, it saves them a billion dollars a year uh, through reducing the churn because they're recommending the right content for you based on what you're currently watching. I mean, I'm sure, I mean, I'm sure you guys watch Netflix or some of you do at least. And there's always this recommended, uh, recommended watching, so it's, it's always good for that. And obviously as well, we, we've done some research, or Nielsen have also done some research that you know, nine out of 10 customers do want to have contact with brands. 
Uh, they want engagement, you know, they want help, they need help, they need guidance. At the end of the day, it's a journey and you need to guide these guys on that journey uh, because you know where they want to go. One of the things as well, like general activity on Netflix, 75% is dri driven by this recommendation um, and Amazon sales as well, 35% of those sales are actually generated through recommended products. The other day I bought a book on Amazon and then you know, a week later I'm back on Amazon and it's recommending me very interesting books and I actually buy one or two of those recommendations. So again, a very important tool uh, to utilize when talking about personalized experiences and driving experience on site and boosting overall engagement. So one of the most important things uh, is segmentation. Uh, segmenting your audiences accordingly. As I said, we all are different. We all need to be treated differently. If it's a very generic experience, it gets boring. I get tired of things very quickly. I tend to exit and not bother engaging. But what we can see that you know, 55% of marketers at the moment are actually prioritizing more audience segmentation, more targeted messaging, more specific messaging. Um, but also alongside this, you know, the emotional connection is very important. At the end of the day, the story is super important. If you've got a boring story, no one's gonna bother listening to you, right? Like, I mean, I've got a couple of examples later on which we can go through, but at the end of the day as well, you know, they're, they're more loyal. If they have a better emotional connection with you, they're more likely to recommend you as a brand, recommend different products, recommend different experiences. Um, so it's super important to create this connection with your audiences. Are you still watching? Sorry. <laughs> okay, so four key aspects of uh, storytelling. I mean, what, what is the point of storytelling? Um, you know, when we're looking at this, what is the general effects that it can have and the actual impact that it can drive? The first one is it creates awareness. I think as we just saw, influencer marketing, you can share stories, you can build awareness, awareness campaigns. I'm sure everybody here probably runs ads. You know, you have your awareness ads that are always on running, trying to build the brand as well. Um, but this is what storytelling can do and it can actually help with. It creates interest, excitement. Uh, you know, as I said, if it's a boring story, no one's gonna listen. If I was boring, I think most of you would probably be falling asleep and I don't, think there's anyone here falling asleep right now, so this is good. Uh, but it's all about building that emotional connection with your audiences. And then it creates desire. Um, and I think this is, again, building on that kind of influencer marketing. You know, I think we live in a generation currently where Instagram, different stories are all around. We all look at what other people have. Uh, it creates, I don't know whether it's a healthy thing that it creates, but that want of a lifestyle. You know, I want to be like this guy. I want to be like these people. You know, these people who are sharing or using the products of your brand, uh, sharing it on Instagram, you know, it creates that emotional connection as well that these influencers are using it, therefore I should as well. And also it's a bit of a call to adventure. Uh, so essentially what you're trying to do ultimately is get your consumer or your customer to do something. Uh, as I said, when we look at working with brands, you know, we... We always define the customer journey from start to finish. Because at the end of the day, the customer doesn't really know where to go or how to get there. We need to be there to guide them. We need to be there to drive them to the right place at the right time and ultimately make them a re returning user, uh, loyal customer, higher lifetime value, you know, all the key metrics when, you, when it comes to e-commerce or it could even be you know, for publishing websites or different sites like this. So before I delve into this, actually, a uh, little story. We work very closely with our partners, um, and essentially a lot of our product development is based on this interaction, this engagement that we have with our partners. And one of the, one of the conversations that we were having was, you know, at the end of the day, I'm driving a ton of traffic to my website, uh, but 70, 80% of this traffic is actually bouncing off. Uh, it's not engaging with me. I can't do anything. I'm wasting money on my ads. I need a fun way to engage users to try and make them sticky. Make them sticky, encourage them, and again, guide them down the route. So actually what we did is we built this product um, based off of that feedback. Now, I'm sure, as we've seen before, Instagram is huge uh, in Malaysia uh, and globally as well. I think it's actually starting to get a little bit more popular than Facebook uh, in terms of general kind of connections and, and things like this. So what we kind of did is copied what Instagram does. Um, and uh, we're starting to actually run this on people's websites. 
So what you're actually able to do now is you're actually able to create stories and engaging messages on websites. Again, it's creating almost like a consistent experience going from a social platform to a website where you have your stories running across and you can help boost that engagement. It's all about trying to drive the user engagement. Ultimately, if you target your upper funnel uh, and try and engage them higher up, uh, naturally more will filter down and convert at the end of the day. So, I mean, we can see great examples of this, uh, not only on Instagram, but Nike, uh, Nike or Nike, whatever you want to say. Uh, Netflix and Instagram always associate with powerful visual storytelling. And I think when it comes to especially mobile devices, you're browsing the web, you know, it's a really small screen. There's not a lot that you can do, right? I mean, one of the biggest problems that a lot of our partners face is it's a small screen, but I have like 100 different messages that I want to get across to people. So how do I do this? Uh, but actually running this kind of stories can help this. Uh, it can actually drive the engagement. It can actually allow you to not take up too much real estate, but generate a lot of content. Uh, but it can be very segmented as well. And I think one of the most important quotes, I don't know if you guys can see it here, uh, but in the bottom here by Steve Jobs, essentially you need to get closer uh, than ever to your customers. So close that you tell them what they need well before they actually realize it themselves. So this is very consistent, right, with what I was saying earlier about you know the journey that you want to take your customer on. You know the journey that you want to take your consumer on. You just need to take them there on that. And I think uh, Steve Jobs is a great advocate of this or was a great advocate of this. Um, and I've got a couple of slides later on to, to delve into this. But what it's all about is boosting that engagement and boosting that experience and emotional connection with the brand. So just a few stats from Instagram itself. Um, so about a third of all stories on Instagram, uh, the most popular ones, are actually driven by businesses themselves. So it's actually businesses like, for example, you go to Nike's page or Adidas or Puma. Uh, there are other brands out there. Um, but these are the most popular stories on Instagram because people associate with those brands. They like those brands. They have the emotional connection. Uh, and what we tend to find is that 25% of those stories lead to a conversion. Now that conversion could be swiping up and landing on the website. It could be somebody going to an event that Nike's hosting. I keep using Nike, I'm not sure why I'm wearing Adidas at the moment. Uh, or it could be ultimately sales. I think people are now starting to use Instagram as a bit of a shop. Uh, so you can actually start to go to product pages, convert, and there's some interesting tracking that you can do that way. Um, but essentially, businesses are also adopting this. Uh, again, it's all about that influence of marketing, social media awareness, and, and building that as well. So this is just a very quick example um, of a journey for, for users uh, that we've managed to create with a few different partners. Uh, and essentially, the main theme is that your story needs to be consistent. Uh, it needs to be consistent, it needs to be hit at the right time, at the right place, with the right branding, the right message. Um, so we can just see here, generally, like landing to the website for the first time, I can see products, you know, what's available. One of the most interesting uh, use cases that we have for something like this is that actually people will create stories based on pricing. So I've got a 50 ringgit store, I've got a 100 ringgit store, 200 ringgit store, so on and so on and so on. And what we tend to find is when you create these kind of buckets on stories, you get a lot higher engagement with those, with those particular uh, stories themselves. And we actually are then able to segment those users. So identify your users who are frequently browsing your cheaper products, and then we can push them down this personalized journey. So driving them to certain pages, following up with key messaging. Again, I'm sure a lot of you are already doing this in terms of you know, your abandonment emails, your abandonment pushes. If you're not, it's a great place to start. It's always worth doing if you're in the e-commerce world, but not only e-commerce, but other industries as well. Um, but I think the main thing here is consistency. You know, the branding is consistent throughout the whole user journey, about throughout the whole experience itself. So this is why we created this product, uh, so that users can actually experience that brand a little bit firsthand on the website, rather than going onto Instagram and then having to go from Instagram to a website and then convert. It's a little bit more of a direct, uh, direct channel. So f three, three main things here that we're trying to drive. Uh, the first is product discovery. 
Uh, for your new users, for people who have not engaged with brands before, I don't know what you do, I don't know what you have, I don't know where to find it. These are the common questions that we ask when I'm first engaging with someone. Uh, like, how can I find what I need as quickly as possible? And this doesn't just apply to e-commerce or things like this, it can be also other industries as well. You know, for media, as an example, I'm a massive like F1 fan. Uh, I always go on to BBC Sport, go on to the F1 section, see what's going on. You know, having this personalized content for me, uh, allowing me to find that page as quickly as possible, naturally is going to make me a loyal user. It's going to make me return, keep using you guys, and you know, essentially become that loyal consumer. It also boosts user experience. Uh, people like funky things. People like things that they can engage with things that they can experience. Uh, and this is what this is about. It's about creating a new experience for your users uh, that not a lot of people are doing. So it's about being unique, uh, engaging, and again, you know, through GIFs, through polls, stickers, tags, like all this, you can actually boost that general engagement. So it's a great way to actually in in sorry, increase the user experience. And the third is ultimately driving conversions. Um, I don't need to delve too much into this. I think we all know what funnels look like, and you have your sales funnel. It's all about trying to drive as much traffic as possible through this funnel uh, so that they ultimately convert and ultimately drive revenue for you as a business. But the secondary effects of this is that you're creating your loyal users, uh, like creating them into returning customers, higher lifetime value uh, as quickly as possible. And again, I think segmentation, as we've said before. So this is an example of the same website, but for two different types of users. On the left, we have somebody who is very price sensitive. Um, they tend to buy your cheaper products. I'm a cheapskate myself, so I'll try and find the best deal possible. So as cheap as possible. And for these guys, what we'll do is we'll demonstrate, OK, on the left side, we have $99 store. I mean, it's dollars. I don't think that's cheap personally, but there you go. And then on the right, we have your trendy buyer. So people who are more into your new products, engaging products, new launches, they tend to be a bit higher value than your typical users, uh, but they then see a completely different experience. So this is again, elevating the fact that segmentation is important. You need to be segmenting your users. You need to be creating unique experiences uh, across the funnel for your different types of users. So, where do I start? One of, the, one of the most, I think, if not uh, important TED talk that I've listened to for me personally was this one uh, by Simon Sinek. I don't know if anyone is aware of Simon Sinek at all or if you are, fair enough. Uh, but this is a great way because ultimately it's all about that why and this is about creating that story. So without a why, you won't have an impactful story to tell. So it's always good to start there. Um, watch this TED Talk. It's 20 minutes long, but it's definitely worth a read. Uh, he talks about the Wright brothers. He talks about Steve Jobs. Um, so it's definitely worth a look. And the second one is start segmenting. Uh, segment your audience. And the way you can do this, there's a lot of different ways. You can do it geographically. You know, East Malaysia, West Malaysia is very different. Different needs, different wants, this kind of thing. Demographic, you know, income, you know, people can afford more, less, uh, again, ethnicity, age, this kind of information. Psychographic, so again, based on the general activities, the interests, the opinions. Behavioral, so what do they actually do? How do they engage with your brand? Are they active? Are they inactive? Are they looking at high value items, low value items? Just generally tracking and monitoring this kind of behavior. And finally, contextual. So if it's seasonal, obviously, more seasonal, relevant content is going to be better. Just a couple of examples of success. So we did this with Samsung. Uh, you look at the funny language. We did this in Europe. So this is a screenshot actually from our Turkey office. Uh, and actually what we were doing is we were boosting general engagement rate and conversions on site by actually creating you know, really nice looking experiences on their website. So very, very cool, very, very good, very, very engaging. And this is one a little closer to home, so with Fabelio, uh, as you can see here at the top, they have a lot of different things going on. So actually creating this engaging experience, what we managed to do is increase their general engagement metrics, you know, decrease bounce rate, increase pages per session, session duration. Ultimately, if you're focusing on these key metrics, naturally then your ultimate sales will increase as well. 
So just a final word, I guess, just to demonstrate the impact of storytelling. I mean, I showed you this slide a little bit earlier, but it's a little bit boring. Um, I think one of the key differences would be, like, if I add a bit more of a storytelling twist to this, so that you can make it a little bit more engaging, a little bit more emotional, a little bit more personal. So what I've done is I've changed it uh, and sort of listed out here, you know, I'm very passionate, like super passionate about understanding key difficulties that you guys face, anyone faces when it comes to the digital landscape. And essentially, I, I'm a problem solver. So I'm a big problem solver. So this, I mean, this in itself, you know, it's a completely different story to I currently run customer success at Malaysia. So this is another good example of trying to utilize a why, like starting with the why, as I was saying before. And again, as you can see, a few more examples. So use the solution data problems, uh, breathe, believe in growth and development. So using different language, but it's a little bit more emotive. Using more emotive language builds that connection and ultimately can then cause your audience to become loyal customers. And I think we have done. So are there any questions or are there any questions on Slido? We have questions on Slido? Okay. While Slido is lighting, loading up, does anyone want to stick the old hand up? No. I'm the same, don't worry. Whilst this loads up, I mean, I'll be floating around, so if you haven't managed to put your question on here or I haven't managed to answer it, feel free to grab me. What's Insider? Good question. <laughs> Insider is my company. Uh, not my company personally, I wish it was, that would be nice. Uh, but it's the company that I work for. Uh, as I can say, back here, we are a growth management platform, so we're a technology partner uh, for a lot of, lot of different brands here in Malaysia. Uh, we focus on general, uh, generally kind of conversion rate optimization, but also increasing personalized experiences on site. So this could be data management of users, segmenting your users, reaching out to them through different channels. And this was just one of the channels was the in-story that we created, uh, which was very much like an Instagram-like experience. So I hope that answers your question. If it does not, I'll be over there somewhere. Uh, so feel free to grab me and we can have a, a further chat about that. Thank you.